everyone, and welcome to SBTV.com special segments on fibromyalgia in the workplace. I'm Susan Wilson Solovic, and we appreciate you joining us. And my guest today in the studio is Dr. Richard Bly, who is an internal medicine doctor specializing in age management. Welcome to the program, Dr. Bly. Thanks, Susan. Now, in full disclosure, I should tell everyone that you are my primary care physician. Yes, I am. All right. Well, I appreciate you coming in and doing this no for problem. me. No problem. Um, let's talk about fibromyalgia. SBTV has really been focusing on fibromyalgia and trying to raise awareness about what it is. So let's just start off with that simple question. What is fibromyalgia? Fibromyalgia is truly it's a syndrome and it's a pain syndrome. Um, it's associated most likely with some sort of dysregulation within the central nervous system in terms of the way we sense pain. And why is it? I mean, we hear a lot about fibromyalgia now, but 10 years ago, it, you really didn't hear anything about it. Why is that? I think because 10 years ago, we really didn't feel like it existed. If you came in with the constellation of symptoms we often see, most people thought it was a psychiatric disorder at that point. Why is there, I read a New York Times article not too long ago that basically said fibromyalgia doesn't exist. Uh, why is there so much controversy over fibromyalgia? Because even the Mayo Clinic has a, a special treatment clinic mm -hmm. for it now. I think the problem is that, as with anything in medicine, if we can't have a test that shows us exactly what it is, or if we don't have a specific set of signs and symptoms that are universal for everybody, we always need to put something in its pigeonhole. And often you can't do that in medicine, and I think that's why it's so difficult and why so many people don't believe that it's truly a disease. What are some of the symptoms a patient might experience, and then how do you go about diagnosing it if there's no, like, quid pro quo test? Well, it's difficult. Um, the most common symptoms are just widespread pain and they're generally in all four quadrants of the body. Um, people typically have specific tender points within the body, and generally the diagnosis of fibromyalgia has to do with people having this pain syndrome for at least three to four months. Generally, they typically will have pain at at least 11 of the uh, pressure points that are normally associated with fibromyalgia. We also see a lot of fatigue with fibromyalgia. Um, that's very common. You see a lot of non-restorative sleep disorders. That's a common part of it. You can see um, issues with depression. And then the question is, is the depression part of the fibromyalgia? It's kind of which comes first. Is the individual depressed because of chronic pain, or is the depression overlying on the um, fibromyalgia? So it's which came first, the chicken, chicken or, or the egg. egg. Right, exactly. exactly. Um, now, I have heard that some insurance companies, um, there are a few drugs, or at least mm -hmm. one drug now, that is for fibromyalgia specifically. Um, and some of the insurance companies are saying, wait a minute, doctors, we're not going to just pay for that at first. We're going to expect the patient to try mm -hmm. variable treatments. Um, what's your take on that? Have you seen that, or what, what do you feel? Well, I think that's common with any new drug that comes out. Uh, the insurance companies can sometimes take months before they'll start paying for it. Reality is they want to pay for the cheaper drugs that have been used in the past. Um, some of the generic drugs that have been used, they may not be as effective, but they want to usually have a trial of one of the generics before they use one of the newer drugs that are out. Speaking of drugs and other treatments, um, since there is the only the one drug right now in the market, exactly. what are some of the treatments that fibromyalgia patients might be able to do to relieve some of their pain? A lot of the treatments of the past have been centered around using some of the antidepressants. Uh, so some of the older antidepressants like amitriptyline were used. We know that a big part of this disorder is a sleep disorder. So using some of the older um, antidepressants like trazodone, um, medications that improve the quality of stage 4 REM sleep will help. Um, we also use just a lot of the different pain medications. We'll use anti-inflammatories. Um, you know, that's sort of been the mainstay of treatment for years. Other things are just, you know, common sense things, getting enough sleep, reducing your levels of stress. Um, you know, those are the big things I think that we start out doing. You know, some of the trigger point injections tend to help some people. Um, but there's still so much we don't know about fibromyalgia that we just really have not fine-tuned the treatment, and everyone's 
symptoms are somewhat different. But they are focusing more on research in terms of finding a cause. And then, of course, if you find a cause, you can hopefully find the cure. True. And I think a lot of the research has been based on signaling uh, pain impulses from the central nervous system. And that's where a lot of the uh, newer medications like pregabalin, Lyrica, which is the newest one, the only one approved. And what it works is it helps to modulate those pain reception. And it's sort of like tuning down the stereo. You're just tuning down the noise there. And that's basically how those drugs work. They're drugs that have been used for partial seizures. We use it for diabetic neuropathies. We use it in people who've had shingles and have post herpetic neuropathy from that. Um, but what these drugs do is they work centrally within the brain. And like I said, they just sort of tune down, tune down the volume so the pain is not as severe. So they're really not getting the source of it. They're just trying to camouflage some of the symptoms. I think that's basically what they're doing because we don't know what causes it. Uh, we know that there are some things that can predispose to fibromyalgia. Often you'll see it in people who have had trauma, individuals have whiplash. Uh, you see it much more commonly in females than males, sort of a six to one ratio. Uh, you see it more commonly in females um, who have a, are of a childbearing age. So there may be some hormonal issues associated with that. Um, we know that sleep is a huge problem with fibromyalgia. And they've even looked at studies using uh, human growth hormone in treatment of fibromyalgia. Because a lot of individuals with fibromyalgia do not get adequate restorative sleep, which means it's not the number of hours you sleep, but are you reaching that stage four REM sleep where you're getting most of your rest? Right. Okay. Now... Most people who have fibromyalgia, if you look at them, you would never know they're sick or they're suffering. True. Um, that, that's difficult because a lot of people say, you know, I'm, I don't feel well. Mm -hmm. They drop out of the workforce. Eventually they even isolate themselves socially. What could you tell people like coworkers or friends or family members um, to do or to think about in order to help the fibromyalgia patients stay more active? I think they need to be empathetic. They need to understand a little bit more about the disease. I think so much in the past it's been thought to be predominantly a psychological issue. And now we know that that's probably about 20% of those individuals. I think the first thing to do with anyone who's been, you know, possibly diagnosed with fibromyalgia is to make sure there's nothing else going on because you see associated connective tissue disorders, some, like rheumatoid arthritis, uh, lupus can be associated. Uh, you can see individuals with significant psychiatric issues like bipolar disease. You need to rule those things out. There can even be underlying malignancies, malignancies that sort of mimic the pain syndromes. So we all make sure first that you have the right, to, right diagnosis. It's a process of elimination, obviously. Right. Um, what about non-medical treatments for patients? I've heard about myofascial release massage, um, other therapies, anything that you recommend or see that might work? I think the myofascial release techniques work great, some of the trigger point injections. Generally, you have people who have either um, myofascial pain or they have what's called um, allodynia, and those individuals have pain even with light touch. The pain doesn't radiate. The myofascial pain tends to be more pain associated within the muscle or at the juncture between the muscle and the tendon. With the myofascial pain, a lot of that can be improved with massage. Um, acupuncture can improve it. Um, you can get improvement with trigger point injections. Um, even things like improving your posture, improving your flexibility, all of those things can improve symptoms. And some of those things are hard to do because the they pain are. and the stiffness that makes it you not want to do it, right? It makes it very right? difficult, Absolutely. yes. Absolutely. Yes. Um, any advice for someone who may be listening today and think, wow, I may have fibromyalgia, and, but they're not getting any diagnosis? Um, any, any tips to help them find the right diagnosis? I think sometimes they need to go to uh, rheumatologists. Uh, most internal medicine specialists should be able to recognize fibromyalgia. Um, and then I think they have to have other testing done to make sure there aren't any hormonal deficiencies, uh, hypothyroidism can cause exacerbations or problems with very similar to uh, fibromyalgia. You can see women as they're hitting 
perimenopause or many menopause, some of the drops in estrogen, testosterone can kind of crank up the pain. So you have to start looking at other associated uh, comor comorbid uh, diseases. Okay, great. Well, thank you very much. This is enlightening, and I know it helps a lot because this is sort of, a, as we said earlier, a misunderstood disease. Oh, it really is. Yeah. Thanks for joining us, Dr. Bly. Okay, thank you. And thanks to all of you for watching us and being part of SBTV.com's Fibromyalgia Awareness Series. I hope you watch some of our other podcasts and video segments. And remember to stay tuned to SBTV.com, where small business is our only business. This programming is supported by Pfizer.